Recently, another piece has come into place in my digitization puzzle. I'm able to digitize audio cassettes. I'd been able to do it for years, but now I'm doing it at full professional level using the best equipment that I can get and putting it into a form that I would consider basically permanent. This is a huge revolution because I've had so many audio cassettes in my life, and I thought I'd take a moment just to talk about what they've meant to me and what this new setup means for going through my to-do pile. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Jeff Atwood, Daniel Boyd, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. Let's get all those technical aspects out of the way. It's a Tascam 122 Mark III audio deck connected to a Motu 4-channel analog-to-digital converter, which is then going by USB into a copy of Audacity, where it's being saved as a full 24-bit FLAC file. That should about hold it. In terms of today's disk space, holding FLAC audio is really easy, and it's the most flexible that I can have for any future work being done by myself, experts, or machines. I started out with what I call the Experimental 10, 10 cassettes that represented easily replaceable sound and which ranged from full commercial tapes all the way down to multi-generational dubs of concert bootlegs. The idea being to find out where things were working with this new setup, what sort of changes might be needed tape to tape, and what kind of process am I going to do hundreds or probably more likely thousands of times dealing with my backlog of audio cassettes. Besides the Diamond Head collection, which has hundreds of audio cassette bootlegs, I've been handed lots of audio cassettes over the years. Multi-level marketing schemes, conference recordings recorded by professional firms, although not really very well, along with a range of personal audio cassettes that I've had around and which I promised myself at some point I would convert to digital form. As usual, I tend to put my own things at the back of the queue, but audio cassettes were, for me, incredibly important going through my teenage years and then right up into college. In my home in Chappaqua, I had a multi-cassette recorder which was connected not just to record radio, but to record phone conferences and voicemails. People would leave messages for me on various voice mailboxes that I had gotten hacking access to, and I'd record them by literally pressing a microphone against the phone. Later, I learned about induction taps, and I was able to connect things directly to the headset to get some pretty good recordings. I recorded conversations I was having, phone calls that I got, and weird and wild places that I called as a young phone freak, keeping a memory on tape. There's also recordings of my high school band, my college years of audio experiments with my roommates and different film projects I was working on. I expect to find a lot of myself and a lot of friends I haven't thought about in a very long time on these tapes. I also have a bunch of tapes sitting in boxes in the Internet Archive Physical Archive, which I can now have shipped to me, and I can go through them. While my 30s were marked by my work using video recording and interviews conducted on camera, my earlier years were all audio. Things I recorded over the air or in person became how I expressed myself, became my pieces of memento and memory and history. There's something special about having to depend only on a voice to learn about things. To have some strange experience or strange statements float over the air in darkness on audio. You can bring a tape recorder almost anywhere. It'd fit in a briefcase, in a bag, and you could pull it out when you wanted to ask people about things and you didn't want to write it down. 
Some of the most exciting parts of the Internet Archive's uploads are in, after all, our audio section. We're perfectly built for it. People upload a WAV file or an MP3. The Archive processes it almost instantly. And you end up with a waveform of what's on the tape to have ideas of what you're going to end up with. And thanks to transcription software, you can get a pretty good idea of what's being discussed. Through all of these advantages, the Internet Archive's open source audio collection gets the most uploads every single day. People upload albums that they're copying and, and mixtapes that they've made. But there's so many more things that come through that pipeline. Air checks of shows decades in the past, magazines that only had an audio component, interviews with people that immediately make you sit up and marvel that somebody had the forethought to sit with a tape recorder and ask these questions. For some time now, people have told me that they're sitting on interesting cassettes and would I take them and maybe digitize them? And the answer was always yes eventually. But eventually is here now. Unfortunately, I have to do the same thing that I do with video cassettes. Digitize in real time. There's tricks you can do to play a tape faster, but the quality drops immensely. Before setting off on doing all of this, I checked with experts, including one named Uncommon Ephemera, who does film strips and audio recordings, digitizes them, and puts them on the Internet Archive. These are some of the most beautiful experiences you will have listening to professionally and non-professionally created works of art, the kind of backroom weirdo recordings you would have, if you were lucky, discovered at a record shop in a little stack with a handmade label. Uncommon ephemera gave me lots of advice on which deck to get where you were trying to balance spending a lot of money but also getting lots of bang for my buck. People, you see, were quoting me decks that were 5000 or $10,000. That's money that could go in many other better places. The cassette deck that I bought, again, a Tascam Mark III that was fully refurbished, was about $900. More than I would spend on my own, definitely something worth crowdfunding for. A couple people helped me, and I was able to afford this excellent piece of equipment. The analog-to-digital converter enabled me to properly take the audio signal out of the cassette tape and turn it into a USB 3 signal, ensuring as minimal noise added as possible. So, here I stand at the bottom of a mountain of audio tape. What awaits me? Well, two paths, really. The first one is the cassette to-do list, where I'm going to be moving through these cassettes as I go, doing multi-level marketing tapes, conference recordings, and musical recordings as I can. I'll switch the tapes in, clip down the sides if I haven't gotten back to the audio recorder, and then put them on the Internet Archive. The other path leads to a much more intense pile. These are the reel-to-reel -reel recordings, literal reels where I'll have to acquire more equipment to go on to this analog-digital converter and get that medium going. That's going to wait a little while. Instead, I want to clear out this backlog of sound and get it online as soon as possible. Audio cassettes are very unpredictable. I have to have all of these detectors for distortion or the tape not running right and a bunch of other problems that crop up. That's on me. It's all about, at the end of the day, a process. At my peak, as I speak, I can digitize three videotapes, one audio tape, and floppies. Could I make it more? Probably. But I think it's critical that as I ramp up this new, intense approach to this audio medium, I want to give it a lot of my attention. And I hope, as these FLAC files make their way onto the Internet Archive, get their simple descriptions, and start being enjoyed, that they'll play a part in culture 
worth the time, the hours and the days, to make them come alive again. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to James Bigkoyanu, Mark Pilgrim, Ernie Hershey, Michael Rubin, Craig Talbert, Dileep Reddy, Sean Kelly, Trixie the Cat, Martin, Sembiance, Tiggs, and Anonymous, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. There's a collection on the Internet Archive simply called Cassette Tapes. These are all the times that I see that somebody has clearly taken a cassette tape, digitized it, and sent it to us. No theme, no overarching aspect or subject from what they're doing. They're just making cassettes become digital items in our stacks. In the foreseeable future, I think that's where my stuff's going to. There's something inherently charming about a pile of tapes online, that way of discovering and serendipity that comes when you leaf through item after item, discovering uh, something you didn't even know about 10 seconds ago and immediately downloading it or playing it because you're too curious for words. There's a thousand, <laughs> probably 10,000 of those experiences waiting for you on the Internet Archive. And I'll take great pleasure in adding many, many more. <laughs>